you see dripping like this. This pipe is above the window on purpose. So you look out the window and you see dripping, you know that your air conditioning unit, the evaporator coil in the attic is clogged and that's a safety pan, that's a safety drain, it's coming down, you know that you need a technician here. If we were doing a pest control inspection, a termite inspection, I would say that these moist conditions next to the house are conducive to what destroy insects, termites. That would encourage people to go up here and get this fixed. One way or another, this problem is being encouraged to be fixed. We're on the west side of the home, We're going around counterclockwise. We got some separation, and th these are called control joints. Some people call them expansion joints. Call them what you will. But when you have this much brick, we expect it to move. We expect it to move. So, now brick is a very good building material. This home could burn down, you could reuse the brick. And it's maintenance free as long as you don't paint it, unless you need to point it every once in a while and seal it and that kind of thing, like right here. These control joints. These are called weep holes. One good thing about brick, I mean, it's a great insulator for both sound and heat. Fireproof, like I said. Maintenance free, like I said, but it's porous. And water will go through this brick. Water can go through the brick. So, we have these weep holes. And that's enough. This is not a weep hole. These need to be sealed. Why? Because the brick is porous. Okay, that's your control joints, expansion joints. You got this much brick, remember? And we're in North Texas. Expansive clay soil it expands and contracts. We know it's gonna we know it's gonna crack. So we want these control joints to kind of control that cracking. And then we we've, we've got a little more cracking right in here. Coming on along. Separation between the bedroom window and the brickwork here. I'm missing a couple window screens. This is continuous soft vents. Pretty good separation right up there around the header. Satellite dishes are never installed properly. They never are. I've never seen one installed properly. Not in the wild. I'm going to share, I'm going to share a picture with you that over 10 years ago I was given an illustration in a class I attended and I said, this is how it's supposed to be done. And I said, okay. And I've been calling out of ever since. And that vent right up there, that's the clothes dryer vent. That's the wrong kind of vent. That vent is no longer acceptable. You should have a vent with a damper on it, a one-way flapper, a vent that's larger. So that vent no longer meets the current requirements for installing a clothes dryer. You want to change the vent and you want to clean the dryer vent before taking possession of the property. Before installing a clothes dryer for sure. Coming on along, this is the water heater. You're going to learn about those this piping being too high and the elbow being broken on that. I'm going to come back and catch some spares here. Uh, we got a little bit of erosion along the side of this house right here and one of my I want to take this back. I don't know if I mentioned it yet or not. I don't know which video I've, I've done or not, but we do have double grounding. Well, how about that? Grounding rod's not properly buried. Lawn sprinkler heads. And I don't even know if this lawn sprinkler system works, to be honest with you. We might find out. Might find out. Depends on how brave I am. Might find out, but the spray heads should not be closer to the structure than four inches. This is the control wire conduit for the lawn sprinkler system. And you see these little holes like this? Okay, that tells us that this is a cable tension, post tension cable foundation. Now there's a couple of different styles. Some of them have cleats, they call them piers. Some of them sit, you know, more flat on the ground, different styles. You know, whichever one it is, it's fine. I don't know. I don't know which one it is, but I know it's a post tension type cable. The cables make the foundation a lot more strong. We've got a couple cracks right here. That's about the only thing that I've noticed. I'm still looking. It's about the only thing I've noticed in regard 
to you know outside signs of the actual foundation movement. there's other signs of movement and we're going to talk about them we have some erosion along the west side of the garage here now you see this right here this faucet okay I'm, I'm about to do a video with this but this is called a vacuum breaker this is called a vacuum breaker right here that's a good thing we do not have one on the back faucet it's continuous soffit so when we get into the attic we're going to be looking for soffit baffle soffit vent baffles that's what we're going to be looking for stretcher bricks we got a little bit of movement these are called freeze boards right up here they're kind of rotating out of place in a couple areas that's the other signs of foundation movement. moving on along with the separation going on here look at that this is the interior exterior i can never tell but we got some signs of movement between the drywall technically it's the exterior but that's probably going to be in the interior and then this one is fine, but over here in the east and west walls, there's little signs of the drywall movement around there. We've got a little bit of wood rot that's starting to form right here at the base of this casement, the garage car entry casement. Got a little bit of wood rot right there. Moving on along. I'm not sure what this rod is for. I do not think, I do not believe that it's for the sewer, uh, water supply line. It's some kind of crazy rod coming along. Speaking of crazy, um, the exterior, all four of the exterior soffit luminaries are, are missing. Luminaries like light bulb. Okay. Moving on along. And somebody delivered some groceries. Somebody better come home in time to take care of that, I guess. I don't know, man. Man, that's just... That's sick. A little bit of movement right here on this casement. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. Level grading and drainage right in here. We got a little bit of movement up here. Another freeze board that's rotating out of place. Coming along. The rain gutters should divert water farther away from the house. They should. They just pour water out here. That's not good for the foundation. That's not good for the foundation. It's good that you got rain gutters. That's a start. But they do not divert water far enough away from the house. Another thing about the foundation is a tree shouldn't be closer to the house than 24, 25 feet. And to, to allow for branches to keep from harming it, to the roots from pushing up the foundation. So I get it, that's a pretty tree. You're going to have a hard time talking your wife into cutting that down. I assume. Sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes the wife has more sense than the guy. That's my house anyway. I'm coming along here, got a little bit of movement. We got some more stair step cracks between the brick and mortar. Some of these windows have screens. Some of these windows have screens. If this was a termite inspection and it's not, then I'd say that this fence next to the house is conducive to wood destroying insects by design. And that would be everybody just laugh about that. Now right here, some people call those corner pops. That's a shrinkage crack. Alright? For various reasons, the concrete slab foundation and the brickwork expand and contract at different rates and shrink and grow at different rates for various reasons the pressure always comes to the corner if it's in the span of a hand i don't know whose hand and it goes back in this direction that's that's a cement issue that's a it could be a brick issue because that's what's holding up the brick but that is not a foundation issue it's not a foundation issue Coming along here on the back, and we got some more siding like we do around the front porch. Some of the window casement is a, a little worse for wear here. Uh, this one's a little worse than the other one, right there. I think I, I think I called my atten your attention to that. Coming along here, see these right here? These are termite baits. All right. Now they could be installed by a professional I haven't seen a notice yet I've only seen the electric service panel and the water heater I haven't seen under the kitchen sink but these could be installed by professionals but they're also available in box stores box hardware stores like Lowe's you know take your pick you know Home Depot so the Texas Structural Pest Control Board does not recognize a bait treatment that is uh, that's a um, call it consumer installed they only uh, recognize professionally installed we i don't know if it is or not and i'm not doing a termite inspection today either by the way but i'll tell you about termites all right they're dumb animals they've been around here millions of years ago before man 
you know, back with the dinosaurs and stuff. And they'll be here after we're gone. They're instinctual animals. They don't really reason, you know. They, they, they run by instinct that's, you know, kept them healthy for years and years. And part of what they read is they, they move by pheromones. They have fear pheromones. I could, this is a known poison area, they'd stay away from it. They have food pheromones. They have sex pheromones, like the you know, cologne you get in the magazines. So, if you got food in here, the termite comes in, it gets the food, goes home to mama, feeds it to the queen, she eats it, she dies, the colony collapses. So, but if you have this bait that's been in the ground forever, the pheromones are still in the ground. It could be dry. So all the termites are coming around here looking for food because another there's another termite nest and another one and another one. They read the pheromones and says, come eat here. And they come over here and there's nothing to eat here. They're not going to turn around and go home. They've been following a food path. They're going to go, they're going to go, huh, that's called a clue. These bait stations are useless. They're even, in my opinion, my professional opinion, they're a nuisance. They're uh, dangerous. They're um, conducive, if you would, if they're not you know, maintained properly. So, just something to think about. I want to go buy yourself some new termite baits and go around and do your consumer based thing, I guess. You could do that. You could do that. The weather stripping here on this door is kind of loose. I haven't got to the front porch yet. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Speaking of loose, is that loose or what? It's loose as a goose. This is a goose. Okay, let's get in here. Get some power. Do we have any? I'm not getting any power. There we go. Power. GOCI. Reset it. I'm going to have to write that. We have some loose receptacle outlets. And we got level gradient drainage right here. And also, I didn't call it to your attention. I had to run around. All right. But in the front flower bed, underneath those box bushes on the east side of the front porch, now that's level and grading too. That's level grading and too. Now these windows and doors, these fenestrations, we're missing some more luminaries. All right, they're supposed to have Z-bar flashing over them so the water doesn't come down behind the wall. We don't have it. How about that? I seem to be forgetting that part. Over here is fine. All I want to see a couple inches, but here's kind of tight with the soil being kind of high right here. It's supposed to be about six inches. Remember those termites that are crawling up and stuff? We want some good clearance over here. We don't want to make things too tempting for them. Moving on along, we're again missing another screen. These butt edges, these butt ends, all right? There's supposed to be flashing tape behind them. You see any flashing tape underneath there? I don't. I don't see any flashing tape underneath there. I'd fall down dead if I saw it. I'd just be out of shock. I hardly ever see it. That doesn't make it right. Just because nobody puts flashing tape behind there doesn't mean everybody's not supposed to. So we're missing some flashing tape here and here. There's a, there's a clean out. This faucet does not have a vacuum breaker like the front one. Remember at the very part of this video when I was talking about that? I was talking about the vacuum. I said, we're going to come back to this. We do not have a vacuum breaker for the back faucet. Moving on along, still not far enough away. We got a whole video for the air conditioning system. But I'll land in freeze boards. They're still rotating out of place a little bit. Oh, how about this? These windows are a different style. Someone's, come on. That's attacking me. These windows are a different style than these windows. Unless there's something I can't see going on. Well, well the sash is fine. This is a side sash window. But look up here. See those little squares? Those are weep holes. What do weep holes do? They drain. Remember I was talking about the weep holes at the very beginning of the video? On the brickwork. It lets the vapor out because it's porous. Any water that gets into the wall around the windows, because windows are holes in your walls, it allows the water to, to leak out, but it can't. 
because the window has been installed upside down. Can you believe that? Is that crazy or what? We got upside down windows. That's what we got. Looks like this house has been inspected before. See that blue dot? I don't use dots. I, use dot. I have. I've used dots before. But uh, I just report now. So probably that window's fogging. In fact, I can see it fogging right there. So we got some fogging windows. But the window's installed upside down. And if somebody's inspected this house, there might be some more information. I encourage you to find that inspector and to get that information. Not all inspectors see things the same way. And it gives you some history because some of the things might have been fixed, but at least you know what's happening. So, yeah, uh, the more documentation my client can get, the better decision my client can make about having a house. I, I encourage you to find other home inspectors, other home inspections, other reports. We got some stair step cracks through the brick and mortar right in here. And then we got some vertical cracks right here. We're on the west side of the parent bedroom. And remember when I was showing you the leaky pipe right over here? There it is. I put my head over here. We, we're, we have come 360 degrees around this structure. 